It is my pleasure to introduce and please welcome the president of the college, Dr. Kwong Wu Kim. Thank you. Graduates, parents, families, friends, guests, distinguished members of the faculty and staff, and all others here with us today, I welcome you to this happy occasion, and I thank you for being here to bear witness to this very important moment in the lives of our students. Now, with your permission, I would like to address my remarks today directly to our graduates. Congratulations. Today, we honor you, your accomplishments, and the choices and sacrifices which got you here today. The degrees you have earned signify that you are disciplined, resilient, and tough. The success we celebrate today bodes well for your future success. But right off the bat, let's squash two common graduation notions. One, that you are now in charge. You aren't, sorry. Two, that the world now owes you. It doesn't, so get over it. Now, commencement speeches are predictable because we all feel obligated to say nice, i.e. safe, things at these events. Just last week, a very smart person I know started a commencement address by saying, Today is so much better than yesterday because you are graduating. Whoa. Uh, in my experience, creatives are never put off by a challenge. So instead of using the next few minutes to tell you how wonderful you are, I'm going to challenge you today. When I look at what's going on in our country, I see division, polarization, and an increasing tendency to frame the discourse in terms of an either-or binary. Now, it's easy to blame singular personalities for the current state of affairs, but to me, that's like blaming the symptom for the disease. My current explanation for what we see around us is that somehow, we are all trapped in a metaphor of war. Think about the language we use. We decry the war on science. We question the efficacy of the war on drugs. We stake out positions in the culture wars, on and on and on. But this is not just about language. In the modern concept of war, victory is the defeat of the opposing side, even at the risk of total annihilation. In war, the ends justify the means. If innocents are harmed, it's collateral damage, the cost of war. Lies, deceit, and deception are part of brilliant war strategy. In the highly reductive context of war, great value is placed on simplistic, easily digested formulations of the opposition of good versus evil. Appeals to common identity, be it racial, ethnic, religious, or national, become the rallying cry that convinces individuals to sacrifice everything, including personal convictions and humanity for the greater cause, defeat of the enemy, who is depicted as something less than human. There can be no compromise with the other side. To collaborate, to work with the enemy, is a shameful act of weakness and treason. This is complete zero-sum game thinking. I only win if you lose. Now take this framework and think about what we see. Leaders who refuse to seek compromise, pseudo-tribes bound together by dubious credos demanding the suppression of alternative viewpoints and perspectives. 
a widespread acceptance of lies and reprehensible behavior, a debasing of the public discourse to simplistic slogans, outright appeals to racism and bigotry, and increasingly portrayals of the other as subhuman, dirty, and dangerous. It all makes sense in a war. What doesn't make sense is that we seem to be at war with ourselves. Now, even if you accept this line of thinking, you may be thinking, what am I supposed to do about it? I'll tell you what to do. Change the metaphor. Model new ways of thinking and being. Be leaders who know when to stand firm and when to bend understanding that to yield can be courageous when it is an act of recognizing a better idea in the face of opposition. Show the world what you already know, that to collaborate is the ultimate act of generative creation. In your lives and in your practice, demonstrate the inherent falseness of either or us them thinking. Reject simplistic slogans and catchphrases and memes and help others to embrace the ambiguity and complexity which are central to our human existence. I know that is a lot to ask given that you are still at an early stage of your journeys. But I believe if there were ever a time for you to set your sights high and dream beyond your personal success, that time is now. Speaking of which, on May 6th, the New York Times ran an article with the following headline. Civilization is accelerating extinction and altering the natural world at a pace unprecedented in human history. At a plenary meeting in Paris a few weeks ago, the United Nations sponsored intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services comprising members from 130 countries released the summary of a report three years in the making compiled by 145 experts from 50 countries with inputs from additional 310 contributing authors. One of the core findings in that report is that one million plant, animal, and insect species are currently at risk of extinction directly due to human activity. Let that sink in for a moment. One million species. Now, you may believe that global warming is a hoax perpetrated by a foreign country. But the fact is, we are doing a lousy job at taking care of the planet that sustains us. Thank you. Even if, even if we as human beings were given dominion over the earth by a superior power, we were never given permission to destroy it. So the question is, what agency do you have to impact this global challenge? Well, I think it starts with daily choices and your commitment to being informed. From there, it becomes a choice as to how you incorporate sustainable practices in your life and in your work and in your creative practice. And then ultimately, how you influence the thinking and choices of others. We're all in this one together, but the reality is a large part of the responsibility for finding solutions lies with you and your generation. Now by now, some of you may be thinking, I kind of wish he had just done the nice, safe speech today. <laughs> but I hope you hear these words as a sign of my belief in your capacity to amaze all of us. All right, so as my final send-off to you today, I want to give you my simple rules for success. These have remained more or less the same since I started doing this work because in spite of changing times, certain behaviors still matter and are still helpful. So this is a list of eight, but don't worry, this really does not take long at all. Okay, so here's the first one. My obsession 
the, the rule that I try to live by. Three words. Be on time. I'm going to say it again. Be on time. It's very simple. Be late, get passed over. That's how the world works. And no, your time is not more valuable than anyone else's time. Okay. Number two. Do what you say you're going to do. Don't overpromise. If you can't do it, just say so. Unreliable people quickly become insignificant. Three, reach out to others constantly. The story of the self-made individual is a myth. Your opportunities will come because someone sees who you really are and what you are capable of and chooses to open a door to help you. And you never know who that person is going to be. So build your networks. Four, listen. Yes, yes, promote your ideas, but don't talk about yourselves too much. You may be very interesting, but you are not the only one. And there is so much to learn from people who are older and more experienced than you. All right, five. Have compassion for others and do not be too quick to judge. Until you have walked in another's shoes, you don't have the right. Number six, be grateful. Given all that we have, complaining, whining, and self-pity are inexcusable. Say thank you a lot. And if you want the expert level tip, say thank you in writing. Now, let me tell you something. I'm an old guy, but that is not an old-fashioned idea. Number seven, take full responsibility for your words, your actions, your choices, and their consequences. People who make excuses are tired. People who blame others are losers. So get it together. And finally, number eight, and this one's important, do not tolerate injustice. Do not tolerate injustice, be it racism, or misogyny, or homophobia, or any other form of hatred of the other. Remember, the Creator gave you a voice, however you express that voice. Use it. Speak up and speak out. In closing, may you each have the fortitude to remain true to your inner voice. Never forget, being your authentic selves will lead you to your greatest successes. So please, let your light shine. Let your voice be heard. Have faith in the goodness of others and the bounty of the universe and let your courage surface. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs>